What's going on guys? Today, let's have a conversation about technically the United States isn't in a recession. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on this because a recession is two or more consecutive quarters of downward or reduced production. And we've almost had the last quarter of almost a 7% increase. So we're technically not in a recession. However, the economy is messed up. And I've been really looking at that. And I feel that I have some more insights that can help you understand what's going on because we have exploding crime. Crime is exploding. The sugar baby index, the number of 50, 40, 30 year old women flooding to these sites. Um, that's a signal that something isn't right. Something isn't right. But if you look at the technical analysis of the broader economy, we should be good. We should be good. But we've got this massive supply chain shortage that's global. And we have, you know, there's a few things that you should consider. Number one. Let's look at the pandemic. The pandemic created a lot of nasty consequences. And one of the things that it created was exposing a lot of people to time freedom. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So now we have a bunch of people who experience to be able to live in a house, not be foreclosed, to live in an apartment, not be evicted, to drive a car, not have it repoed. And these people experienced this for months. Some people experienced this for almost two years. So they have become irrevocably altered, in my opinion, and they're not fit to go back to the workforce because I've been consuming a lot of YouTube content and I'm consistently seeing how to do this little bit of leverage, whether it's using credit cards or crypto to secure the bag, so to speak, and not work that hard. I keep seeing videos and videos with that main theme. And because people have experienced this time freedom, they're looking for resources or activities that can allow them to maintain the time freedom and have some income coming in. There's a few problems with that. There's a lot of problems with that. But let's go ahead and address what's going on with the economy. Once again, from a technical analysis standpoint, we are not in a recession. However, what is going on? So what you have to do is separate the economy into economies. The primary economy, which is the consumption economy, is you know when you go to the store and buy some sneakers, you go to the grocery store and buy some groceries, or you buy a house or you buy a brand new car. That is the primary economy that the GDP is based upon. However, that's not the only economy that impacts us. The second economy is the secondary market. This is when you go to Craigslist or eBay or you buy used car. That's the secondary market. Also, I think I've said this before, the stock market is its own economy. Case in point, when we had like 20 million people who didn't have a job, what did the stock market do? It zoomed. The stock market, if you know how to manipulate it, you can make money if the stock market's up, you can make money if the stock market's down. The stock market is like its own casino, but the stock market is another economy that can be divorced from the primary economy at times because the primary economy, the consumption economy should directly impact the stock market. But let's take Game, Stock and AMC two companies that were not doing well from a fundamental analysis standpoint. Their stocks zoom because this was marketplace manipulation. And this is what's going on with the stock market. 
And so the stock market can be completely manipulated and you can make money with a trash stock. Uh, GameStop, their business model is trash, but there's a lot of people who made a lot of money off this trash stock, which indicates that it's market, marketplace manipulation and it is tinkering with stuff. So the stock market, if you know how to play the stock market, you know how to do options, you know how to do all this other stuff, you understand that what's happening in the primary economy, it doesn't matter for the stock market if you're trying to make money. So we have the primary economy, we have the secondary market, and we have the stock market, which is its own multi-trillion dollar economy. It's its own little world. Then we have which I don't know. I don't know if this should be second, but this is something that I'm very much part of. We have the digital economy. Now, what is the digital economy? It's YouTube, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's OnlyFans, it's Pornhub, it's YouPorn. All of these entities cons consist constitute the digital economy. And I have no clue to how large the digital economy is, but maybe the digital economy should be second after the primary economy because the digital economy is growing, 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 growing. I am very much part of the digital economy. I got my first taste of the digital economy in 2009 and I have not looked back since. So perhaps we should place the digital economy right behind the primary economy of the consumption-based economy that we have here in the United States because the digital economy is booming. There is no, like, one of the reasons, like 2022, let me go ahead and give you some stuff on my development map. I am going to make even more courses because the online course industry is a $104 billion industry and it's growing. It's projected to be the 300 billion in five years. So that's growing. And that's part of the digital economy and the digital economy, which is part of the primary economy because Nike, you know, like I got all this Nike stuff. I went on their website and I, I actually do most of my shopping online. I rarely go to the malls. It's very rare that I go to the malls. Pretty much everything I get, I get it online because I'm very much a digital kid. So let's go ahead and say the digital economy, we have the primary economy, the digital economy, which is growing, the primary economy, which has kinks in it. And then we have the secondary economy, which is going bananas. And then we have the stock market. So we have the primary economy, the digital economy, the secondary economy, the stock market. And we have the fifth economy, which is the underground economy which includes scamming, which includes theft, which includes petty theft. So we have these five economies and the primary economy, I feel there's a lot of problems because there's, there's so much money in the primary economy that certain things can be hidden or overlooked. But I feel the digital economy is growing and the fifth economy, the underground economy, the criminal economy, the dark web, uh, criminal activity is growing. So we have the digital economy and the criminal economy growing. And the secondary market's doing pretty well too. So we have, from a technical analysis, the primary economy, we're not in a recession, but why are there so many people struggling? If everything is all well and good, why are there so many people struggling? I remember when Bill Clinton was president, the economy was fine. If you wanted to find a job, you could find a job. The Bill Clinton economy was amazing. You know, if you want to work, you could work. You did not have the problems that you're having under the Joe Biden economy. And one of the things I think is happening is the primary economy is deleveraging. And what do I mean by that? Things that worked for a long, long, long time in the primary economy no longer work. 
And that's what I mean by deleveraging. And we're, I, I actually, and this may be a bold statement, I feel that the digital economy may surplant the primary economy. Because if you look at the indicators, that's where we're heading. Everything's going digital, everything's going online. If you're starting a business and you do not understand how to, put, you need a website, you don't understand how to do YouTube marketing, Facebook marketing. If you don't really understand that, you're gonna struggle, you're gonna struggle. Because what I do is direct response marketing, which is pretty lucrative once you get a handle to it, but it's slow. It's not something that you're gonna do overnight. It's not gonna be overnight. So we have all these, you know, and I feel because the primary economy is deleveraging, this is what's causing all of the problems because there are people out there. And here's another thing I feel that is happening. Let's look at all of these people who got to experience time freedom. If you own a car wash or a restaurant, if you own a business that is dependent upon low wage workers, you're struggling right now. You're in a dog fight. And here is something that, that, that has happened. When I grew up, I'm 55 years old. When I grew up, you know, one of the most coveted jobs to have was to be a bagger in the grocery store. That was a that was a highly desired job. You got to wear your little shirt, your little tie. You got to meet your neighbors. It was highly like you had to wait in line to get that job. You just couldn't walk in and be a bagger. There was a line of people who wanted that job. And the ethos of the American public has changed because I would never actually set up an interview and not show up. But, you know, being a businessman, I remember when we were interviewing stuff for some of our clients that literally 50 percent of the people who scheduled the interview did not show up. So the ethos of the American public has dramatically changed and you can have people who are broke don't have no money. I am not going to work that low wage job, which we move over to the fifth economy, the underground economy. You have people who would rather commit criminal activity than to work a low wage job. So I feel that's why the fifth economy is exploding because there are valid jobs that these people could get but they don't want those jobs and also like here's one of like i did a video on the lost kings talking about the sugar baby scam and from an intellectual standpoint you know it it makes sense if you can sit at home and you can convince five guys to give you 200 dollars for doing nothing in one day that's a thousand dollars in a day. And if you can do that four times a month, that's four thousand dollars and you've not left your house. I'm not condoning the activity, but from a mathematical standpoint, it's easy. It's easy to see why they do it, because this same person who's not fit for an upper level job. They couldn't make that money going to work. They would get a minimum wage job and they would trade 40 hours of their life force for maybe 400 bucks. And then they got to drive and all this other stuff. So sitting at home on the computer scamming folks, they can make way more money with way less effort. And I feel this is why the fifth economy, the underground economy is just going to continue to explode because once again, if you look at the ethos of the American public and you look at the American work ethic, which has been dampened over the years, they're not going to work these honest legal jobs because they don't pay enough. And this is one of the reasons, and this is part of the deleveraging of the primary economy, because there are jobs available. There are people who will hire them. There are people who will pay them but they don't want them because they have other options. And like I said, you know, from, from me, from a practical standpoint, I don't condone the activity, but I understand the activity. And the um, 
primary economy, especially in the low wage sector, is going to continue to deleverage. It's just going to continue to deleverage. Uh, also, if you look at the primary economy, and this would include the Uber drivers and the Lyft drivers and stuff, that has slowed down because the stimulus money has come out of the economy. The stimulus money is pretty much gone except for maybe a few EDIL loans and stuff. So we're going to see the primary economy continue to deleverage. And I feel that 2022 is going to be a repeat of 2021. However, I feel that in 2023, because right now, let's talk about this. We have been living in a state of suspended animation for the last two years. Normal marketplace forces have not entered the market, but at some point, these marketplace forces will enter the marketplace. And I feel that's gonna be 2023. And I feel that's when we're gonna have the official recession. Because let's look at the housing market. What has caused this housing market to boom? We have X amount of people in forbearance. We have a bunch of houses that uh, we have a, let's call them the protected class. We have people living in houses that they've not paid the mortgage on, but they're not gonna be foreclosed on. So this has dramatically reduced the supply of houses on the market. Because let's say if the pandemic, you know, if we had a, you know, the, the survival of the fittest attitude and there was no forbearance and these people got it foreclosed housing prices would not be anything to what they are today because the inventory would have been much much higher but because we have a shorter inventory because of the forbearance and some other factors this is driven up the price of housing and i don't think that we're going to have a collapse of housing prices anytime soon i think we will have a softening they will stop appreciating. Like I have a friend who's in the real estate and she has 12 houses and she's been in real estate like 10 years. And she said her net worth doubled in the last year and a half. It doubled. So that type of price appreciation cannot continue. It can't because every time the price of a house gets to this level, X amount of people fall off of being able to qualify for a house. Even if they have a great credit score, they don't have the income and they don't have the down payments. So every time the house goes up and goes up, X amount of people get knocked off the ability to afford a house. So when you have a situation where the, the price of housing has outpaced the, the number of people who can buy the houses, the market is going to soften. It has no choice. It has to soften. Now, I don't think we're going to see what we saw in 2008, 9, 10. I don't think we're going to see anything like that. Why? Cheap money. Uh, my house sold in a week. Million dollar house in a week. Why? Because of cheap money. Typically to buy a house um, at that level, you would be paying 5,000 a month on the mortgage. Because of cheap money, you can get that same house and you can get it for 3,500. So that's one of the reasons that all everything is moving because uh, I was living in my neighborhood. There was a house on the corner for three million. There was a house on Long Island for 1.5. This was before the pandemic. They were just sitting. They were just sitting. So when money got cheaper, people started to buy these houses. The three million dollar house went the one point five million dollar house. So cheap money and long as we have cheap money and I predict that we will continue to have cheap money in 2022 because the Fed's not going to raise the interest rates. They're not going to do that. So we're going to have this cheap money in 2022. You will see more of the same what you're seeing now. I don't think it's just going to disappear. I feel that if you are a first time homeowner, home buyer, bless you because you're in a dog fight right now. Um, you don't have enough money. People are asking you to waive inspections. I would not suggest you waive inspections because you can buy a house and it can have a whole bunch of issues that can be very costly. So 2022 is going to be a repeat of 2021. 
except I feel the fifth economy, the underground economy, is going to explode. Uh, the second, let's, let's call it the digital economy, the second economy is going to explode. And then the primary economy is going to continue to deleverage. We're going to see all, like one of the things that's happened in the primary economy, once again, going back to people getting a taste of that time freedom. Uh, one of the girls I'm dating, she, her job, and th these jobs that she does, they pay 130 to 200,000 a year. And they were having such a hard time maintaining people that they've allowed everyone to work from home. And this is what the girl, I you know, she gets up, she's got dogs, she hands her dogs, she works, then she goes to the gym at three o'clock and she comes home. So having this type, it's like you work a job, but it's like you're being self-employed because you get to organize and structure your schedule. And once you get a taste of that, you cannot go back to a regular day. You, you just can't. Like, I could not work a job. I've been an entrepreneur for 23 years. I could not work another job. Like, you know, there's times that I will just, you know what, I'm not working today. And I'll just come home, watch TV, work on some projects, do what I need to do. Like last week, I just decided that I'm just taking off because I can do that. And this is what people crave. They want that type of control and flexibility over their schedules. And it's intoxicating. So for the super, you know, in the chicken date, she's super technical. She, you know, it's what she does <clears throat> is very technical. And people in her position, they're getting what they want. I don't want to come to the office. And this right here is one of the reasons that housing prices in these little towns are exploding because people don't have to go to, they don't have to, they, you, you, your job may be in California, but you can live in Vegas, you can live in uh, uh, Utah, you can live in Texas. And right now, this is part of the primary economy that you have people, their job may be in New York, but they may be living in Alabama. So they'll be getting that New York salary, but they'll be living in Alabama with that lower cost of living. And this is something that you're going to continue to see for years and years to come. Uh, the pandemic opened this door. We're not going back. You're going to see, and it, you know, it's, I remember years ago, I date this girl and she, it was called working remote. And it is crazy right now what is happening with working remote. And you know, I'm in Atlanta, but most of my clients don't live in Atlanta. So I kind of get it. I've been working remote for 12 years. Um, I have clients for, all literally around the world, from Japan to Africa, to Spain, to UK. So one of the things that's, you know, the, we're gonna continue to see the primary economy deleverage with the workers, with, um, low wage workers not wanting to work. And that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge because if you have a business that is dependent upon low salary workers, you're going to be in for a dog fight. I, I, I don't see this changing anytime soon because once again, how can these people pull this off during the pandemic? The number of adult children that moved back home with their parents exploded. So these people can afford to not work these low wage jobs because they don't have a full array of bills. You know, they may be living with mom, they may be living with big mama. They, so, and all they have is a car note so they can take that hit and not work that low wage job. And what you're going to see, because I, I talked about this before, the you know, before the pandemic and, you know, with my recession talk videos that you're gonna see a lot of people, and it's the lower economic strata. That's where, you know, and that's gonna be about 100, 120 million people in the United States of America, maybe 150 million, which, and we only have a population of 330 million. So we're talking about a lot of people in that lower economic strata. And this is going to drive automation like you would not believe. 
you're gonna see an explosion in tech, you're gonna see an explosion in automation, because it has to be, because like I said, you know, I talked about this. Uh, there's a McDonald's I went to and you walk in and there's these two kiosks and you go to the kiosk and you key in what you want. And then there's a few people. It, it's gonna get to the point where you're gonna walk in a restaurant like McDonald's, Arby's or something. You're not gonna see anybody. You're gonna key in what you want in the kiosk and your food's gonna slide out of the tray. That's where we're headed. And we're gonna see with automation. Now, I don't feel that automated car, self-driving cars is around the corner. I don't, I don't think, I think we're still 10, 15 years out from that. And once that happens, this is gonna open up a whole nother set of circumstances and consequences because if you're my age, you cannot remember getting your driver's license remember going to get your driver's license how exciting that was to get your driver's license and if your parents had a little money they bought you a little car and you had that freedom that's going to disappear right now we have a lot of kids who are not interested in learning how to drive and when we get to self-driving cars we're going to have people who will not learn how to drive once again, this is going to really shape and reshape the American culture. And I, I figure before we get to fully autonomous videos, uh, fully autonomous ve ve vehicles, I feel we're 15, 20 years away because there's certain things in play, like there's unions, there's trucker, you know, the technology exists right now. We have the technology right now, but it's going to be, I figure, 15, 20 years before this technology is completely deployed. And because we, we have a lot of stuff that's already in the pipeline that they're not going to disturb. But yes, you know, you want to look at the deleveraging of the primary economy. And like I said, I feel that we're going to hit a true recession in 2023 because the funkiness in the primary economy, because the stimulus has created like an artificial reality. Because right now, true marketplace forces are not entering the picture. And this has created this suspended state of you know, economy. Because like I said, from a technical analysis, we're not in recession. But, and then we have people who could work, but choose not to work. First time I think this has ever happened in American history. So we've got that. And then we've got people moving to the digital economy. Uh, I'm getting ready to start a new channel talking about the digital economy. I'm gonna call it pure money. So give me a little time to get that set up because guys, I am here to tell you that the digital economy is the next boom sector. It's the next boom thing. And what you're gonna see are creative people, writers, uh, video graphicers, people who do videos, they're going to literally explode. Um, that's where, that's where you, you know, if you're trying to figure out your place in the world, you want to get digital. You want to go digital hard as you can because that's where the money is. Right now, you have ordinary looking girls making six figures on OnlyFans. Now, this would be the top category of OnlyFans. And these are girls who've had followings. This is not like a girl named Judy and Judy's like, hey, I'm gonna get on OnlyFans and show my, my goods and stuff. You know, she might get $600, $700, but the real money is coming from the people who are, have proximity. Like if you're a girl on Instagram and you have 1.5 million followers, then you go ahead and you start up an Instagram account, uh, OnlyFans account, you have a built-in audience. It's a license to print money. And this is who's making these six figures and seven figures on OnlyFans. And really, they're not doing that much. They're not really doing that much. It's because they already have a fan base and they're monetized that fan base. So one of the things that you're going to see going forward is everyone's going to be running to the internet. But part of the problem, and this is why I'm gonna create pure money, is a lot of people have no clue because you can make a fantastic sum of money on the internet. 
you you really can you really can and but you have to position yourself because i remember let, let's talk about what happened to me with my first digital product making money a to z with self storage and auctions i started writing that book august 2009 i had the first version of the book ready october 2009 and from October 2009 to October 2010, I made $62,000. And from coming from the storage auction background, it was amazing because one of the biggest problems I had in the storage auction business was I would get a good unit, I would sell that stuff, then I would have trash. I was the factory, I was the manufacturer of that product. And, and then 62,000, and then 92,000, and then I did 1.5 million. Now, once again, proximity. I wrote that book, started the YouTube channel, started the blog 14 months before the shows came on. And when the shows came on, they were like commercials for my book. That's why I made so much money because I took action. And one of the things that you're gonna to have to see, cause like the primary economy, if you're a highly skilled worker, this, the primary economy is whatever you want it to be. But if you're in low wage or you're, you're doing a job that can be replaced by some software or automation, that's gonna happen. But if you're a highly technical, specialized, you know, you're making 130 to 250, you can work from home, you can demand what you want, you can, you can get whatever you want in this economy because those skills, corporate America needs those skills to be corporate America, so you can do what you want. Whereas the lower echelon, they're just, I feel a lot of people are gonna commit to crime. They're gonna turn to crime because right now, and I have some insights on this. Um, you know, I did a video a long time ago where I could have been a white collar criminal. That did not go over as well as uh, another video did, but I made $50,000 in three days doing white collar crime. And I felt so bad about it and I never did it anymore. I just stopped it because I felt that if I kept doing this, I was gonna get caught and I was gonna go to jail and I don't wanna go to jail. So, but I, you know, and this was in the, in the 90s, right? So if white collar crime could be that lucrative in the 90s, you got people who are creating syndicates who are making millions of dollars from crime. And once again, if you look at the work ethos of the American per people don't care where they get their money from. As long as they have money, they don't care if it comes from crime, they don't care. And this goes back to the ethos and the American work ethic. So I see the fifth economy doubling in the next 10 years, doubling. Um, this is selling a weed, cocaine, petty crime, scam, all that's going to explode. And you're going to see high level syndicates with scamming. You're gonna see people set up these organizations, they're gonna have employees. It's gonna be very sophisticated, it's gonna be really well organized, very well run and these people are gonna insulate themselves from getting caught. Because typically, what I understand, and this is one of the reasons that I was able to commit my caper, so to speak, is I did it myself and I did not have, there was no one else involved. And once you create these syndicates, every time you bring a new person into the syndicate, that's risk because you don't know what that one person is gonna do. They can rat you out, they can, they can tell the authorities. So that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting. But right now, like I said, I'm gonna start a new YouTube channel called Pure Money. And it's gonna be talking about this digital economy and the things you can do because once again, you can make a fantastic amount of money. I was in the storage auction business for about 10 years and I made more money by myself leveraging the internet with my one book than I did in one year than I ever made in the storage auction business. And I had a partner, we had employees, we had a warehouse, we had trucks. So I was making more money sitting at home in the basement 
Then I was out there busting my hump because you know there was a lot of conversation. Hey, Glenda, you get you know a lot of people try to pull me back in the storage auction business, and I was like, <laughs> you ain't getting me away from this digital money, man. You're you like no, like right now. Um, I've already set my budget for next year. I already have the money to pay my bills for next year in the bank already. And this is from the digital economy. It, you cannot do this with um, normal methods. So one of the things that I want to do is talk more about, you know, because right here, this is going to be the Institute of Economic Thoughts. We're going to be talking about the broader economy. We're going to be talking about these things. And we're going to be looking at these things and looking at the economy and how you can protect yourself and what to watch out for. Because like the video, Worthless People, uh, that segment of society is exploding. You know, I had some comments. We've always had people like this. This is true. We've always had serial killers. We've always had we've always had homeless people. But the number of homeless people is exploding because of the global reset. Once again, here it is from the top. You were here today. In the future, you'll be down here. And this is going to happen across the globe, across the world. And a lot of people are going to suffer. And you know who's going to suffer the most? The children. Because their parents are being reset. And they're going to, the inheritance for the kids is going to be that reset. That's going to be their inheritance. That's going to be their legacy. So, guys, once again, understand, we're not in a recession but we have a lot of recessionary activity based upon this funky pandemic economy. Because I'm looking at this, because like I said, 2022, I think it's gonna be pretty much like 2021. But 2023, I foresee a real recession because right now, like the supply chain thing is a manipulation just like the, the manipulation in the stock market. And at some point, real market forces, and because the real market forces are like gravity. At some point, gravity can like, I go off and walk off my balcony. Gravity is going to activate and I'm gonna to fall to my death. So at some point, gravity is going to come back because right now we've had a lot of manipulation, like the CARES Act was manipulation of the economy. The CARES Act that once when they were giving people that additional $600 a week, $600 a week, 2,400, that's more money than a lot of these people ever made in their life. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. You, you know, I, I, this, this pandemic has a lot of nasty long-term consequences. And the pandemic, you know, speaking of it, uh, there's some new variant that has come out. So this is going to be with us. The pandemic thing is going to be with us. It's going to become a norm. It's going to be like the flu. It's going to be like the cold. This is going to be around for a long time. Uh, shout out to Alan Roger Curry, who, who got, who was diagnosed with it, had to go in the hospital. Saw recently that he was at home. So I'm glad he's doing well. But yeah, man. Um, Funky, funky economy, man, it's funky. And if you want to activate yourself, you gotta get out of debt. You gotta get out of debt. So that's all I got for you. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have a live training talking about getting your money, you know, it's, I gotta put all that together. I'm working on that today. But things that you need to do to prep for the future. And it's free and the link is below. So that's all I got for you guys today. I will talk to you in the next one.